Hello, everyone. It is Sunday here in the laboratory, and I've been staring at images of inflamed brains for the past few days. So I thought I would give you a peek of what that looks like. And these are data that I collected from MECFS or myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome participants. So let's get our hands digitally dirty and delve into some of these MRI and positron emission or PET scans. All right, so I'm going to set up the image viewer here, and I'm going to show you four individuals just as an example of what I've been noticing as I go through these data sets. Now, what we're looking at here is a brain structure in white looking from the front, the side, and the top of the brain, and in red is the neuroinflammatory activity. And we measure that by injecting a tracer that attaches to microglia when they're in their activated or inflammatory state. And the tracer is called 11FDPA714. So the brighter or the hotter the red signal is, the more inflammatory activity is being indicated. Now, looking at the data in this way, it allows me to fly around the brain and just really see what's going on. Where is the problem in the brain? I can see if the neuroinflammation is concentrated in specific areas or if it's distributed throughout the entire brain. Now, I've just begun looking at the data, but so far it looks like there are three different patterns that are emerging in MECFS. And again, these are just my first observations. They could easily change as I look at more scans and as I do more analyses. So first, I just want to show you, here's a healthy control. And this person shows little to no neuroinflammatory activity. Now we expect to see some low signal, even in healthy individuals. And that's because even microglia in their resting non-inflammatory state can pick up some of the tracer. Um, but as you can see, there's not much to look at with this person. So this is a control. Okay, so let's go to the first MECFS patient. Uh, the first thing I'm seeing are individuals who have very specific spots of inflammation. This person, for example, has bright hot spots in the amygdala and hippocampus. And what's interesting here is that the inflammatory activity is perfectly bilateral or on both sides of the brain. And so this hot spot. It can't be a stroke. It can't be a tumor because it's in the exact same spot on both sides of the brain. And these are very important regions that you've probably heard me talk about before. I talked about the amygdala just last week. Also, this person has a lot of inflammatory activity in the paraactoductal gray, or PAG. And this is critical for pain suppression and also for the body's responses to fear and anxiety. So I haven't looked at this person's symptoms yet. I'm only looking at the imaging, and then I'll look at the symptoms. But based on the pattern I'm seeing here, I would guess this individual probably has a anxiety component to uh, their condition, and they probably have widespread musculoskeletal pain, similar to what you would see in fibromyalgia. All right, let's go to the second group that I, I think I'm picking up on in MECFS, and this is an example. This is a person who shows widespread inflammation throughout the entire brain. And you see here that it doesn't really matter where we go, there is neuroinflammation. And I, I forgot to mention, we're only looking at gray matter in this particular analysis, which are the neuron cell bodies. So wherever you don't see signal, that's because that's white matter or the myelinated axons. And so they're excluded from these images. So everywhere there's gray matter, we see neuroinflammatory activity. So inflammation throughout the brain. Obviously, kind of common sense would tell you that when all the brain regions seem to be affected, you would expect to see many types of symptoms, mood and cognitive and sensory and many others. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are the most debilitated patients. And that's because the ones I've seen so far, and I haven't looked at all of them, but what I've seen so far is that although they have widespread inflammation, it looks to be less intense than some of the other groups. So in these cases, it may be that the individual symptoms are less intense, but because there's so many of them, the cumulative effect of so many different symptoms create overall debilitation. And again, when I look at the symptoms later, I'll find out if that's the case. 
So let's go to the third pattern I'm seeing, and this is a person that shows that pattern. The third group are people who have inflammatory activity mainly in the thalamus, the midbrain, and the pons, and the, and the brainstem as well in most cases, and pretty intense inflammation like what you see here. Now, this pattern uh, looks familiar to me uh, at first glance. This looks a lot like the pattern that was shown in the original PET MECFS study that was done over 10 years ago by Dr. Nakatomi. And while the distribution of neuroinflammation, it's more limited, it's not brain-wide, the intensity is very significant. And because the thalamus and the midbrain are involved in most brain functions, the symptoms can still be extremely widespread in this group, even though it looks like not all the brain is affected. Everything goes through the thalamus. So they can have all kinds of different symptoms despite this more localized inflammation. And in fact, these individuals may be the ones most likely to show significant post-exertional malaise or PEM. Now, again, these are just my guesses and thoughts that I have while I explore the data. These are not official hypotheses. I just wanted to show you kind of how we think about it as we get a hold of the data and take a look at it. Again, after I look at the self-reported symptom data and I do statistical analyses, the groupings may change before the scientific paper is released, uh, but I do want to show you how that process works because you rarely get a chance to see that. Usually all you see is the end product and you're never given a glimpse of how we actually got to that point. We got to that paper where everything's neat and tidy. It's, uh, it can be messy and there can be many, many steps up until that point where you get the final paper. So uh, just a pretty quick, quick video. Uh, the brain scans are very interesting to me and they certainly support the main hypothesis and the main reason for doing the study that MECFS involves brain inflammation. That's what we're seeing here. So I will keep seeing where the data lead us. I'm going to be sure to let you know when there's other exciting things to talk about, as, again, as I do some more exploration here. Um, but I do have to finish a brain lactate paper before I get this one written up, and I'll give you some more updates on that as well. So that's all for today, just a real short one. I'm going to get back to the analyses, and I will be back to share some more information soon.